Welcome to our matrix topic. This is example one and it's basically an introduction to matrices. On the screen you can see effectively the journey that we're going to take through the different ideas that you can learn through these videos, through this course. So we're going to have a look at, at basic concepts just now uh, in example one. So first basic concept, what is a matrix? Well, uh, for those of a certain age, uh, most people would think of the word matrix as connected to the movie. Uh, it's 20 years old uh, if you're in 2020 at the moment. Uh, 1999, in actual fact, it came out, Keanu Reeves, um, and it brought into public uh, awareness the, the word matrix. It's um, until then mostly a mathematical idea. Um, and the, the green uh, strings of numbers there were a feature of the movie if you haven't seen it. Effectively, it's talking about computer systems and the idea of living in a computer-generated world and the matrix was simply all the code that made this artificial world seem real and that was the idea of the matrix and it, it was true to an extent in the sense of a matrix is about uh, a whole list of data however the key thing in as far as we're concerned is it needs to be a rectangular array of data in other words, there are a certain number of rows and columns. Uh, so you can see that the idea of the matrix is just being uh, a series of vertical uh, lines of data that's moving up and down as it was in the movie. Uh, it was a bit bogus. However, that it brought everybody to the idea of what a matrix was, whether or not it was actually particularly real. So a matrix m looks more like this as far as we are concerned here. Uh, a is a matrix and it's got two rows of numbers and it's got three columns of numbers and so yeah that's the first thing that we need to to know what a matrix looks like uh, every matrix has what's called an order uh, and that's the number of rows by the number of columns you don't actually multiply the two numbers together just like if you've got a bit of wood that's a four by two uh, it means you know, four inches by two inches uh, then the idea of the, this matrix here we could write as being, um, write it down. it's got two rows and it's got three columns, so we could say that A is a two by three matrix. Okay, that's kind of important to remember. Um, be careful because uh, it's, it's basically the number of rows by the number of uh, columns. We, we often think about the horizontal idea first of all, uh, but this time it's, it's, it's in terms of the vertical number of rows first. So two by three matrix. Bag that a bit of information because we're going to need it in a little while. Uh, second concept is matrix can be uh, flipped around or on its side and it's called the transpose of a matrix. And we can put a little T as a superscript and I, have, I compare these two uh, matrices here. This A was two zero one along the top. Notice that the the top row, the first row, is now the first column two zero one going down the way. One three three was the second row is now the second column. So when every row becomes a column and every column becomes a row, then we call that the transpose of A. In other words, row N becomes column N. And a little bit of obvious. Uh, Algebra, if you transpose the transpose of a matrix, you get back to where you started. Okay, so that's just a term. And thirdly, um, there's a particular feature where a matrix has to be rectangular, uh, but special things happen when that rectangle is a special rectangle when it's a square, and therefore we've got the same number of rows as we have uh, columns. So, for instance, two, one. 0, negative 1 is a square matrix. And we're going to be looking mainly at square matrices. That the All sorts of matrices are useful, uh, but square matrices are particularly useful and interesting to work with. So we're going to do a lot with square matrices. Okay. So uh, concept number 4, we can add and subtract and multiply divide matrices. That's what we're going to look at as we go on. Uh, so the basic uh, arithmetic adding matrices, we can add matrices only if their order is the same. In other words, they have to have a matching uh, element in each position. Okay, so in this case here, uh, matrix P is a 2 by 3 matrix. 
Okay, a matrix Q is a two by three matrix, so we can add them together. And so if we wanted to find matrix P plus Q, then all we would do is we would add up each term. So we could say, I'll, I'll write this out in full, uh, but three plus four is the first one, negative one plus zero, negative two plus three, five plus one, uh, zero plus one and one plus negative three, uh, which means that if we tidy that up and just did the addition, we would have seven, negative one, one, six, one, and negative two. Okay, you don't need to write it out uh, in practice, but I just wanted to make that clear. So we can add and subtract matrices as long as the order is the same. And one of the basic concepts of ar arithmetic, uh, the associative law, also works for matrices, and that is it doesn't matter which order you add to matrices, the answer will be the same. Okay? And uh, the it starts adding matrices together, so a little interesting uh, property appears, and that is that if we were to find the transpose of two matrices and then add them, we get the same answer as if we added them first and we found the transpose second. And it kind of stands to reason because we're just uh, delaying uh, the transpose, but we're still actually using the same numbers. But just to prove that, here's matrix P and Q. So we'll say if we do P plus Q, let's just do that first. I'm just going to do it. Uh, because I can add two small numbers together without showing off. 3 plus 4 is 7, negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1, and then 1, that is actually the same one as what we just did before, isn't it? Um, there we go. So we've got our sum uh, of P and Q. Now if I were to transpose that matrix, so P plus Q brackets transpose, uh, then we end up 7, negative 1, 1 becomes our first row, so our column and six, one negative two becomes our second column. And if over here, change the color, we did them separately, we can see that P transpose is three, negative one, negative two, five, zero, one, and Q transpose is four, zero, three. You can see what I mean. We're, we've done the swapping around first and we're still adding the same elements in the same relative position. So if we add the two separate matrices together, we're still adding the three and the four to make seven, five and one and six, negative one, one, one and negative two. Okay. So these wee properties, we're not, you're not going to be called to use a whole lot of these um, properties in, in your work necessarily in the first instance, but they're good little concepts to learn. Okay, so there's uh, one last wee basic concept and then we're done with all of the introductions and that is multiplying by a scalar quantity. A scalar just means by a, a number multiplier as opposed to another matrix. So if we've got the square matrix A, whose elements are A, B, C and D, then if I multiply by some number or variable K, then each of the elements gets multiplied by that amount. So it's just a scaling of the matrix. So that's fairly straightforward. Um, and I'm going to put that together in this first example. So it almost looks a bit like an equation. It says 4x minus this matrix is equal to this matrix. Now, x, you've noticed that all of the matrix names are capital letters, and that's on purpose. So here we've got capital X, meaning X is a matrix in its own right, so X is going to be a square matrix as well. So we can solve this just as we would solve any equation, and that is we want to effectively isolate the, the unknown uh, element here, X. So if I add to both sides the matrix 3, 1, 4, 7, uh, then what will happen is as follows. We'll end up with uh, 4X on the right hand side, the left hand side, sorry, on the right hand side we'll end up with an addition calculation which will look like this. 
Okay, so if we add that matrix to both sides, then obviously that will disappear from the left and we'll end up with that. So we can simplify it now that we know that we can add matrices of the same order. One of the reasons why square matrices are, are good to use is that it's very easy to spot that they're of the same order. When you've got rectangles with different numbers of rows and columns, you've just got to watch out a bit more and it's sometimes easy to miss. 5 and 3 is 8, 3 and 1 is 4, 0 and 4 is 4, 13 and uh, 7 is 20. So there's my sum. Now, if I want to get this matrix X on its own, at the moment it's being multiplied by 4. So we would normally divide both sides by 4 if that were an equation. When it comes to matrices, it's easier to think always of multiplying both sides of an equation. So in this case, we would actually multiply both sides by a quarter. It's easier to think of multiplying when it comes to matrices. So um, the quarter and the four obviously are inverse operations, and that leaves us with uh, x here. And what have we got then? This is the idea of then multiplying, as I just said above, scalar multiplication. If we're multiplying the whole matrix by the number a quarter, then we can apply that to every element inside. So every element gets divided by four or multiplied by a quarter. And so we end up with a quarter of eight is two, a quarter of four is one, a quarter of four is one, and a quarter of 20 is five. So my matrix X has the elements two, one, one, and five. Okay, so that's a f run through some basic ideas of matrices. We're going to go on in example two and three and look at how to multiply matrices together and then all the rest of the stuff. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, on you go and do some practice.